Oh no, it's slow battery! Hello everyone! So for today, I'll be showing you a breakdown of how I animated a Procreate illustration with this Mike Wazowski GIF. Now this is obviously a version of Facebook's new Care React emoji, which practically turned into a meme overnight with everyone making their own versions. And of course, I had to jump into that bandwagon in the hopes of becoming viral. Now when I posted this, it got such an enthusiastic response and there were several people who were asking me, how did I bring my Procreate illustration into After Effects? And that's exactly what I'll be talking about in this video. So this won't really be a div deep dive. Now this won't really be like a deep dive tutorial but this is more of just an overview of what I did but I'll try to explain everything that I did as best as I could but really I practically just winged it on After Effects and tweaked things around until I got what I wanted to get out of it. So this is how I organized my layers in Procreate. Starting off with this green background layer followed by one layer each for each horn and then Mike's body, which I've placed in a group. And within that group, we've got the base of his body, which is that circle. And then a texture layer, which is on a clipping mask. After that, I've got Mike's mouth, which is also in a group. And within that group, I've got the black part of his open mouth. And then a layer for his teeth. And then for the mouth, I also made a version of his mouth that is closed. And then after that, I have a group for his eyebrow, which is composed of one layer, which is this dark green curve. And then underneath that dark green curve, I've got a little bit of this green squiggle right here. That way, if ever I have to raise his eyebrows like that, then you won't see like this weird gap between his main eyebrow and the body layer. After his eyebrow, I have a group for his eye, starting off with his eyeball, followed by a texture layer of his eyeball, which is also on a clipping mask. And then I have another group for his pupil. So his pupil is composed of this green color of his eye. And then I just duplicated that green eye color and made it a bit bigger and darker so that I can create this outline for his eye. And then on top of that, I have the, the black part of I don't even, I don't know the parts of the eye. Followed by a little shine in the upper corner. So again, the eye is composed of a group for the pupil, the eyeball, and the texture of the eyeball. And I actually have three groups for the eye, which is this with the eye open, another group with the eye half closed, and a third group with the eye fully closed. And that's so I can animate him blinking. Now the half closed eye group is actually his eyelids on the upper and lower part of his eye. So all I did for that is I duplicated the eyeball layer, and then I made it a slightly lighter shade of green. And then I erased the middle part of it, something like that until I made this shape. So on top of that, I have a texture on a clipping mask, and then I have a layer of these lines, and then underneath everything, I have this shading. I don't know if you can see that, but it's so there's a bit of shadow underneath his eyelid. It's very subtle, but I feel like it makes a bit of a difference. And I've set this shading layer to color burn. And then for the eye closed layer, again, I just duplicated the eyeball layer, which you can see here. I colored it green. I added a layer for the texture. But this time I have like a dark green texture and a light green texture up here. And then one layer for the line or the crease of his eye. And on top of all of that, I have this group for the screen canister, which is really composed of the base shape of the canister and another layer which is like the level that will show how much scream is inside the canister and for the arms i have one group for the left arm and one group for the right arm and they're really just the same they're both composed of the base of the arm layers and then the textures on a clipping mask for each arm and that's it so as you can tell here, it's pretty important to combine all the layers of each body part that will move into their own group. And that's important for when we go to animate it, it'll make things a lot easier for us. And while you're at it, you might as well name all your groups and layers so that you know what each thing is. 
So once I'm done and I'm happy with how I organized everything, what I did is I... What did I do? All I did is I click this wrench button up here and underneath share, select PSD, which is a Photoshop file. And then I just airdropped it to my Mac. In After Effects, I just imported my Photoshop file. And on this pop-up, be sure that import kind is set to composition retain layer sizes. And then for layer options, be sure that editable layer styles is selected. And I'm also importing a screen recording that I took of the care emoji because I'm just going to be copying the animation of it. So when you double click the Photoshop file that you imported, you'll notice that all of your layers are going to be arranged in the same way that it is in your Procreate file. And to make things a bit neater and easier to find, I just like to color code my layers by clicking on this colored square and selecting a color. And ta-da! Here is how my actual layers look like in After Effects. And what I did is I just copied how the original animation is. And I will say that this is meant to be a parody or a meme or like a spoof of the care react emoji. And so I feel like in this case, it's okay to copy. I'm obviously mimicking the original animation, but I did add a bit of originality to it with this glowing scream canister effect, which I really, really like. And I'm gonna be breaking down how I did what I did. So the very first thing I animated is Mike's eye and mouth. And if you can remember earlier, I made three groups for the eye, which is the open eye, the half open eye, and the closed eye. Now I selected all of those three groups, right clicked, and pre-composed them so that all eye-related elements will be on its own composition called eye-all. And I also ended up rearranging the grouping of this composition and I went into the eye open group and I copied all the layers within it and pasted that into my eye all composition. So within that eye all composition, here we have Mike's eyeball, his pupil, the eye half closed group, and the eye closed group. So every time Mike goes in for a blink, I added in one frame of the half open eye, and then one frame of the closed eye, and another frame of the half open eye, and then go back to the fully opened eye. And then for this part where Mike looks down at the scream canister, what I did to make sure that the pupil remains within the eyeball shape is I duplicated the eyeball layer, I placed that copy on top of the pupil, and then I selected the pupil layer, and under track matte, I clicked alpha matte. And that acts as a mask that will cover up any excess parts that goes beyond the shape of the eyeball. For the mouth, I did the same thing, which is the two mouth groups, the open mouth and the closed mouth. I combined them into a pre-composition layer, and I just switched between the open and closed mouth whenever it's necessary. Now I know in the original animation, his mouth doesn't really open or close, but I decided to add in that closed mouth layer because I feel like it gives that extra emphasis when, a, when Mike is going in for that hug, like he's really hugging that scream canister so tightly. And so it was more of like a personal artistic choice, I guess. And then I added in a squish effect to the eye every time it blinks, which is super subtle, so I'm not really sure if you can tell. But if we twirl down to the scale property of our eye layer, you're gonna notice that these values change. And so every time his eye blinks, I kind of just stretch out the horizontal shape of it and then squish down on the vertical shape. And it's very subtle and hardly noticeable, but I feel like it really adds that appeal to the animation. Next, I created a null object layer. I renamed that as null face, and then I selected my eye, eyebrow, and mouth layers, and picked whipped all of that to the null face layer. And what that does is every time I move my null layer around, all three of these other shapes will follow it. And that really came in handy for when I animated Mike turning his head or tilting his head because it makes it much easier to move all of these parts together. And then for the body, I noticed that in the original animation, the emoji's body hardly moves. And so I kind of just mimic that for the body as well. He only rotates once when Mike turns his head. And then 
he rotates again back to his original position. And then for the horns, I picked whip those to the body layer as well so that every time the body rotates, the horns will rotate along with it like this. And then I also animated the horns individually like in here, Mike very subtly tilts his head forward and so I moved his horns upward. And in this part where Mike moves his head backward, I also moved the horns backward as well. And I feel like that gives off this really nice 3D effect to his shape. Next up are Mike's arms and the scream canister. So I made the body a bit translucent just so we can clearly see the animation of the arms. But if there was one thing I could go back and redo is I wish I could have made the texture of Mike's body a bit darker so that there's more of a contrast against his arms. But it's all said and done so we're just gonna have to go with what we have right now. So for Mike's arms, what I did is right before he goes in for that hug, you can see that in the original animation, the emoji's arms kind of dip down. And so I added in these rotations of the arms as well. I kind of rotated them downward and then rotated them going upward like this, going in for that tight, tight hug, and then back to its original position. And then to give the arms the super bendy, flexible look to it, I added in three puppet pins using the puppet pin tool right here. And I gave three each per arm. One on the shoulder, one on the elbow, and one near the tip of his hand. And it's the same way with the other hand or arm as well. So in this way, I can kind of bend his arm around like this. So when his arms rotate downward for that hug, they kind of bend outward and then going inward for that hug and then back to its original position. I actually added a bit of a delay to the animation of the tip of his hand like this. So his shoulder and elbow pins move down first. And you can tell here that the hand is still bent up like this before the hand settles down into the original position like this. And again, it's super subtle and I don't know if you can tell but I really feel like it's all of these subtleties that really sells the emotion of the animation. And another thing that I did for this hug animation is I added in an ease out effect to it. And this is a little bit advanced in After Effects, but I did promise you a breakdown of what I did. So here it goes. This first point and this second point of the hug, I selected both of that and then I went into the graph editor and I moved this graph to the left and this shape indicates an ease out effect. And what that does is it makes the animation really really slow towards the end like this and i don't know if that made sense but that's what i did i just added in an ease out effect and then lastly here's how i animated the scream canister so i actually got rid of the original hot pink rectangles that i drew earlier and i recreated my own rectangles on after effects using the pen tool I lowered down the opacity to about 58% because I wanted to kind of go from semi-translucent to opaque and then back to semi-translucent for the animation. And I also went into effects and presets and then added in this glow effect to the rectangle. I'm not too familiar with this to be honest so I kind of just messed around with the properties of it but I did animate the glow intensity property so it goes from 0 to 1.5 so you can already see that glow around it and then it goes all the way back to 0 and then I just duplicated my shape layer and made 5 copies of it and then I just tapered off the opacity and glow intensity animation so that it creates this effect of the screen canister kind of gradually filling up with love. <laughs> I don't know. Gradually filling up like this. 
and then they all kind of die out at the same time like that. So I really hope that this breakdown kind of makes sense in a way. Again, this is not a deep dive tutorial into the animation. It's more of just like an overview of what I did. I know I presented it to you with like the steps starting off with the eye animation and then the head rotate and then the horns and then the arms, but that's actually not how it went in real life. I was kind of just going back and forth between each body part. And I also made a GIF sticker version of this emoji, of course. So if ever you want to use it in your own Instagram or Facebook stories, all you have to do is type in Mike K in GIF search. So yeah, I really hope this made sense and that it helps you if you want to animate your own illustration from Procreate to After Effects. And with that, don't forget to create your own adventures and I'll see you in the next video.